National Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs through October 15th, celebrates a population of 64 million people that's diverse, growing, and constantly changing. But can a single term, whether it's Hispanic or Latino, describe a population of such varied ancestry, immigrant generations, and geographic origin? Mark Hugo Lopez is director of race and ethnicity at the Pew Research Center, and Christina Moore is a University of California Berkeley sociology professor and author of Making Hispanics, How Activists, Bureaucrats, and Media Constructed a New American. Christina, I want to start with you. As the title of your book suggests, these terms are of relatively recent origin. How did they come about? How did they start? Well, um, the idea of Hispanic itself has a very long history in sort of the colonial projects of uh, Spanish colonization, but the idea of it as a category in the United States that would be used to collect data and to identify a people really is at the latter half of uh, the 20th century. So really around the 1960s and 1970s, as um, Mexican, Puerto Rican, and even some Cuban populations rallied to sort of get together and ask that governments start collecting their data. And of course, if government's gonna collect their data and the state's going to be able to track, for example, Hispanic poverty rates or Mexican and Puerto Rican uh, employment rates, for example, it had to be called something. Right. And, you know, my work and, and the book tracks really how did this category come to look at these populations, the Mexican-American demands for data, the Puerto Rican demands for data, and see them as sort of a common set of communities um, that could be, you know, put together in an umbrella pan-ethnic category that's large enough, right, to be compared to other groups like blacks and whites. Mark, you've been polling this community since 2008. What have you learned about how individuals identify themselves and what factors go into that decision? Yeah, it's really interesting. We found that it's mostly uh, the country of origin term that today Latino adults tell us that they use most often to describe themselves. Um, perhaps a panethnic term might be the second most common thing that they use, and American might be another term that they use. But interestingly, across immigrant generations, if you're an immigrant, you're more likely to say your country of origin is how you most often describe yourself as Mexican or Cuban or Puerto Rican. Um, if, if instead, if you're U.S. born to immigrant parents, you might be using both your country of origin but also American equally, or perhaps one more than the other. But by that third or higher generation, U.S.-born people of U.S.-born parents, we begin to see really American is the most common term that's used most often uh, by that population to describe themselves. Christina, are these two terms, Latino and Hispanic, are they interchangeable? For many, there are. And of course, there are real preferences. And there have always been real preferences. We've seen since some of the first pollings in the 1980s around this issue that folks in LA, New York, uh, even Houston in urban areas prefer the term Latino. Uh, and folks in Colorado, in more rural areas of Texas, uh, even more rural areas of California prefer the term Hispanic. So there was a real geographic connection to this. And then there was likely a, a real generational connection to this with some generations really liking the term, even the predecessor of Hispanic, Hispano, with an O at the end, uh, having a preference for that. And so we see not only geography, not only national origin, but also generation as being very well connected to certain labels over others. So for example, Folks have likely heard the term Afro-Latino, but you rarely ever hear the term Afro-Hispanic, for example. And so there are just ways that certain terms have been connected uh, to preferences over time. This, I think, just really connects to the fact that there's actually never been one term for which everyone has loved equally and has wholeheartedly been embraced. You know, pan-ethnicity or these pan-racial categories are, are really secondary, yet just because they're secondary to national origin doesn't mean they're less important and they're quite powerful for how we organize the way we live in the world. So for example, I actually think of myself as Mexican American, but also Chicana, and I use the term Latina, and sometimes I use the term Latinx. They're a much younger generation that grew up with different gender politics or sexuality politics than my generation grew up with. Um, I'll often use the term Latinx in many ways because these are bridges, these are different ways of sort of speaking about this complicated and diverse heritage that we have.
Uh, Mark, what has your polling found about the use and acceptance of Latinx? Yeah, it's really interesting. So about four years ago, in 2019, we asked Latino adults or Hispanic adults in the U.S., have they ever heard of the term Latinx? 75% or three quarters told us no, they hadn't. We followed up with a question, though, among those who had heard the term, um, do they use it themselves to describe their identity? And about 3% of Latino adults overall tell us that they use the term. More recently, we've asked Latinos which term do they prefer to describe the population. Hispanic more than Latino is preferred, but about 18% of Latino adults tell us they have no preference for either term, and only about 3% indicate Latinx as a term that they prefer to describe the population. But what this speaks to is the diversity of the population. As Christina was noting, there are many different generations here, many different perspectives on how one chooses to identify, and it really is up to the individual how they choose to identify. And you've also found in your polls, Mark, that as uh, the, the generations go on, as the sort of the generations become mm -hmm. more distant from the, the, the generation that, that immigrated, yeah. that identity sort of uh, wanes a little bit. That's right. In fact, we've found that by that fourth generation, in fact, people who might have ancestry in Latin America may no longer even decide to call themselves Hispanic or Latino. So it's really interesting to see how things can change across the generations, partly because of intermarriage, as people uh, grow up in households where one parent is Hispanic and one parent is not. People may be proud of both heritages of their parents, but what about the grandchildren next? Maybe they may acknowledge that ancestry of Hispanic ancestry, but not necessarily say that they're Hispanic or Latino themselves. Mark Hugo Lopez of the Pew Research Center and Christina Mora of the University of California, Berkeley. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.